Or you anytime. Oh, uh, hey, man, appreciate it, man. You're the man. <laughs> Diego, another season. Welcome back. How are you feeling so far this spring? I feel great, man. Thank you. Thanks for for having this um, little shot with me. Yeah, man. Hey, man, we love having you on the channel. Big supporters. And you look at the year you had last year. Were you happy with your season in 2023, Diego? Um, I think it was a learning process, uh, a lot of up and downs. Uh, I think it was good to go through that and kind of like prepare yourself for the future. If uh, kind of hard times comes again, you know, you feel more prepared. But it was a learning process, a lot of good things to take out of the season, and I'm very excited for the next one. And Diego, let's talk about kind of the things that went right. I mean, you improved as a defensive catcher, the blocking. I mean, what are the things that went right for you defensively last season? Uh, well, it was my first year catching with uh, one knee down. It was one of the things that I, I it was new for me, and I think I did good. Uh, I felt more comfortable, you know, putting myself in a new position. Um, and just keeping that through this new year, um, you know, work is on my on my throwing, my blocking in general, but um, I'm very happy for it. Yeah, I talked to Gomes and he mentioned that they're going to have you working on stuff this offseason. What were some of those things and how have you benefited and have you seen those results early on? Um, I think that uh, uh, one of the things was the hitting, hitting side, like uh, adjusting my mechanics and all this stuff, putting myself in better, better positions. Um, and a lot of the def defensive work too with the uh, new, new way to attack the ball with my glove and new prep pitch stuff. But there is a lot of new stuff coming. Yeah, and we know, of course, prodigious power. You could be a 20, 30, 40 home run guy at the big league level. But what do you think is the biggest key to taking that next step offensively? Man, I think it's a lot of mental, you know, uh, just uh, having a better uh, preparation before the I bat, um, get to know my, my the, the pitcher better, um, having my plan and stick with it. Yeah, and as far as your goals this season, outside of staying healthy, what is your number one goal for the 2024 year? Man, have fun. Have fun. It's the biggest key for you, right? Have fun. Biggest Just key. have fun. Enjoy the game. As far as the pitches you caught so far, anyone stand out? Well, I, I had the opportunity to catch Yamamoto today. That that stuff was electric. He is good. I'm very excited for for all the pitching stuff in general. I see what the how the the future of the Dodgers looks like, but everybody's so good. And what really sticks out about Yamamoto? What kind of pitches, just his style, his delivery? What really stands out to you, Diego? I mean, obviously the style, yeah. you know, it's not, it's not something that you see every day, but uh, really good mix of all of the pitches. Um, very good splitter. Uh, I think was one of the pitches that I really like stuck my, my head. What stands out about that splitter? What makes it so unique? I don't know. I, I haven't got ma that many splitters yeah. in my life. And just to get one of those like really good ones, it's just like it's it's amazing. Incredible, yeah. And hey, he's another guy where when you make it to the show, you're not going to face him in a game, right? Just in live EP. Yeah, I'm, ha I'm happy for it. Yeah. I'm happy he's in our our side. And as far as the guys you caught last year, and you were did a great job leading that pitching staff. Who are some of those names that maybe some Dodgers fans might not know that could have an impact in the future? Some of those younger pitchers. Um, well, some of, some of the guys that I had, they they made it to the show, like Sheehan, uh, Hurt. But I would say River Ryan, yeah. wait for that one. Uh, Nick Frasso, man, I, uh, Ricky Benasco, oh my God. Yeah. Oh, everybody's good. I like, just wait for it. Awesome. Well, Diego, thank you so much, man. Have a great season, my man. Thank you. Take it easy, man. It's always great to talk to you, man. Thanks. Thanks, Diego. Now, people have been wondering why Diego Cartaya hasn't played a game yet during spring training. He hasn't been involved in any of their Cactus League games in 2024. Well, this morning, Fabian Ardaya tweet out, Dodgers catching prospect Diego Cartaya has been dealing with a back issue this spring, similar to the stuff he's dealt with in the past. It's why he hasn't gone into Cactus League action yet, though Dave Roberts said he should be ready for the start of the MILB season. And I have confirmed that as well. Diego Cartai is feeling fine. He is going to be ready to go by the start of the double A season down in Tulsa. And he's very optimistic. He's very excited about getting this year going and the swing adjustments that he has made. He learned a lot defensively last season. And I know all the hype right now is surrounding Tyrone Laranza as the best catcher in the Dodgers organization. Same goes with Dalton rushing. But Diego Cartai still has the potential to be an all-star level catcher. He absolutely has that. He just needs to continue to refine some things at the plate and kind of unlock that potential with the stick. But, hey, they always talk about when certain guys hit the ball, it has a different sound. 
That is absolutely is the case for Diego Cartaya. So do not sell that Diego Cartaya stock. Still has a tons of potential. Just needs to stay healthy and realize it. Now, a couple months ago, I had Dodgers prospect guru, my friend Casey Porter, on the show. And we talked about Diego Cartaya and what he needs to do to get back to elite prospect status. And here was some of our conversation. Diego Cartaya might be one of the most discussed prospects as far as his drop off down a lot of prospect rankings lists from baseball America to perspective, whatever it may be. People are saying, Oh, he's on the decline. I mean, they look at that 189 batting average that he posted in Tulsa. The whiffs were up. He's not great at picking up spin. What is your take on Dale Cartaya and where he's at in his development right now? I think he is a catcher that is grinding its way through the minor leagues. And this happens even to the Will Smith type catchers to where you're a highly ranked prospect. You know, you have all this attention and and you're in the Dodgers organization, which is a just a world of attention. The next thing you know, it's June and you're hitting a buck 80 and you're like, wow, what in the world's going on? And that monkey jumps on your back. You feel the pressure. Then all of a sudden you start pressing. Uh, I have not talked. I didn't. I had about six different chances to interview Diego last year. I didn't do it because I just don't like to talk to guys whenever I know it's not going the way that they want. I mean, what are you going to ask them, right? I mean, what's good? There's nothing positive that can come out of the interview. So I declined to do that with him several different occasions from the simple perspective that I knew that he was pressing. So that's my opinion. I have not asked him. That's just me speculating based on me seeing him probably 25 to 30 times in person. So Diego Cartaya is a young man that I, I'm not concerned about whatsoever at this point. This coming year is going to be huge. If you struggle two years in a row or even a year and a half in a row, that, that's pretty telling. I'm not worried about the one year, especially from what I saw last year. He went out and, and did all the extra work throwing down. He became remarkably better defensively, right? And Coach and Scott Hennessy, the AA manager, who, thank God, beat cancer this last year. They call him Henny, the mayor of Drillville. He would always tell Diego, hey, Diego, don't try to be the Dodgers' number one prospect. Just go out and be Diego Cartaya. That's all you can do because if you're trying to go out there and be the Dodgers' number one prospect, you're going to press, you're not going to be comfortable, and you're not going to be as good as you should be. So I think that monkey jumped on his back. I think in terms of in the box, I think the spin part of it is the fact that he wasn't able to get to the inside fastball. Those two are tied together. So he's kind of that guy that has the negative bat angle I was talking about earlier and then also lists the hands which means that a lot of times when you get that inside pitch, the only way that you can hit it is if you roll over that ball like a tennis racket, which means at the same time, if you do that, that 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 breaking ball on the outer half is going to go right outside of your barrel. I think that part of it right there is the reason why he struggled on fastballs on the inner half at times, which also was tied to the fact that with the same issue also led to the breaking ball away. Just my opinion. Yeah, because, I mean, this is someone who's – he's always crushed fastballs, right? I mean, but now you're saying it's a problem area in the inner half. Yes. Do you think it's – the swing's too big? It's a mechanical flaw. How confident are you they get this corrected from a mechanical level? I think it's a really minor tweak, and I think it's hard to make at a double-A level when your manager is not with you for three or four months because he's fine. Hey, Juan Apodaca, Oppo did a wonderful – matter of fact, whenever Henny went down – the Dodgers thought they were going to have to bring in a whole bunch of different guys like Austin Chubb and roving instructors. But Oppo did such a wonderful job that they just left him alone and let him manage. So Oppo Daka did a great job filling in for Henny. But you get off to a bad start, then you don't have your manager that you trust so much, and then all this kind of stuff. So I, I think the making the adjustments last year were difficult for him, especially seeing that he's still young. I, I think that he's one real small or maybe a couple of really small, not big, real small tweaks away from just being just fine. Yeah, I'm not selling my Diego Cartaya stock. I mean, this guy, the power is still there, right? I mean, maybe he's not going to be this higher on base percentage guy that's going to hit 30 plus home runs, but still, I think the talent is apparent. He's still young enough and. 